This is Eric Estrada from Video Ray. Um, included are my email, this is my email address and my direct phone number, just in case at a later time you may want to uh, ask me a question or ask me to send you some additional information that you might want to share with your colleagues. Uh, you may have some questions during the presentation. Um, typically on the right hand side of your uh, screen you see an area where you can type a message. Uh, we'll review that message and if it's a question we'll try to answer it uh, or get it back to you with, that, with the answer. Anyway, parts of a video array. Uh, this talk is going to be honed towards inspections of uh, inland dams. We use video arrays for other types of inspections. Uh, if you require more information on that, please let us know. Uh, but parts of a video array, typically what comes with a system when you want to do an underwater inspection of your facilities, in this case dams. Um, here's a video array, a submersible. A sonar, which is an accessory that you can add to a video array, and we'll see examples of how it's being used on a case study. And this video array also has a manipulator, a grabber, and we also see examples of how that's being used. The ROV, the sonar, the manipulator is connected to an umbilical tether cable. Uh, in this case, it's being rolled into a pelican case, and then this umbilical this tether is then connected to the control box. On the Pro 4s, the control box has a laptop computer. With this laptop computer, uh, you can view, record, take notes of the inspection that you're doing. And of course, the pilot of the literary Pro 4 system. Now, typically what customers tell us when they want to do inspections of the dams or other facilities is that, is that they want to go to the site and do their inspections. And many times these sites are either remote or they want to get as close as possible to uh, the inspection site so they don't have to use a lot of umbilical, a lot of tether. If you're going to a site that is remote and there's no electricity, uh, with a video, it's very useful to go with one and have a generator. You see this red item over here is a Yamaha or a Honda generator, um, which a lot of our clients do use when they're doing remote tasks. And also, in case you need to go into the powerhouse or other areas within your uh, site, it's very easy just to carry this equipment to the site, to the area where you want to do your inspection. Now, to review areas of a dam, and sometimes a hydroelectric dam, is that you have a reservoir where all the, all the water is um, stored to then be used. It goes through an intake, a trash rack sometimes are over there, it goes through a penstock, and then it hits a turbine. The turbine, of course, moves, generates electricity and then it goes into different your households or places like that. Uh, and then the leftover water then goes into, the, into an outflow river or goes into another reservoir. Now the important part here of generating electricity uh, for a hydroelectric dam or any dam for that matter is that you have pressure in two ends of the dam. In this case P1 and P2. There's a difference in pressure between these two sites. One is elevated and the other one is not. Now, it is important to realize those things because when you have differential pressure, you're generating force. You're generating electricity in this case for a hydroelectric dam. Um, you probably are used to uh, differential pressure and if you're going to a bathtub and you're taking a shower or a bath, uh, or if you're in a sink and you put your hand 
you can feel the pressure, minimal pressure, going into that um, in the household. But when you're talking about industrial areas in which people are doing inspections, bad things can happen. Um, number one, if there's differential pressure and you have one of your extremities in the hole, bad things are going to happen. Uh, if you have to be in the right state of mind to go into a casing that's probably a couple meters across to do a to go in and do the inspection. That's one of the reasons why we use robots. We want to go in into areas where are confined spaces, where typically humans should not be allowed to go into uh, because of danger issues. Now, when we're doing inspections in a hydroelectric or in a dam, the, the different issues that are happening that you want to inspect, there are different types of maintenance inspections and sometimes there are emergency inspections if there are any leaks. Uh, of course, um, this is a, the face, the dry face of a dam and you can see that there's a person there inspecting, there's a leak going through. Uh, talking about places where humans should not be allowed to go into, but in this case you need to find out what's going on with uh, the leak. Um, one of our customers, they basically got a video array on the wet side of the of the dam uh, and started doing their inspections and they wanted to find out where the leak was coming from and then from there come up with some type of data, show the engineers and then come up with a fix. Uh, in this case they found the a leak. Uh, they went inside the dam or they went to the wet face of the dam and found out that there was something different in that area. It was 14 meters below. Um, and that's typically going to be a, a, a fast, easy fix. The other times in which you're doing, um, looking for leaks, in this case, in a lift lock structure, um, and then this leak was causing basically a sinkhole outside the wall. And that can be disastrous for certain people, especially if in the areas uh, downstream to it. They needed to use some type of mechanism to find out where the leak was coming from. Um, so in this case, one of our power users, Jeff Byers, he basically used a video array with a water sampler and basically put some dye on it and then found out where the dye was going to. Then you can find out exactly where your hole, where your leak is, and then come up with a solution for it. Other type of inspections that happen with video arrays, in which sometimes go into the confined space scenarios, are uh, turbines. Um, you can go in through the outflow area of a turbine and double check if there are any visual deformations of this turbine or if they need some coating, extra coating so you can have extra uh, extra life with the hardware that you have in your hydroelectric plant. Um, of course when you're doing inspections of a hydroelectric plant once again with the different parts of that uh, and the intake and the outflow um, depending what you want to do, many times there are doors that basically will close the penstock, the intakes, or the outflows, so you can do your maintenance or you can do your inspections. But many times when you're doing this type of um, process that you're trying to accomplish is that something may not close all the time. So basically what you would do is use a video array to find out if there's a leak and if there's a leak, find out how to fix it. Uh, this is just a basic graph of what would happen uh, when, when a, one of our inspectors, in this case uh, Henning Foster, was in for a company called Norconsult in Norway. Um, and basically with this, he was trying to find out where leaks were coming from. Um, the gates were basically partially closed. They were closing all the way. 
Now remember that P1, P2, the differential pressure. Um, if you have a person going to the gate area and trying to go where the leak is, you're going to get stuck. Um, one of my first demonstrations using a video array was in a hydroelectric uh, dam in the San Diego area, and that's exactly what was going on. The gates were uh, rusted. They, didn't, they were afraid that it was not going to um, lift for that matter. Uh, we did a visual inspection of the gates areas where the chains were, let's say around this area over here, and um, it, 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 looked, it looked rusted, but it looked sound. And then we went to an area where the gap was going on. Uh, there was a very small gap. It was closed, but there was still some type of spill going through. And the video array basically got stuck into the gate. Uh, and then what I did, I just walked where the tether was, pulled out the slack, and then popped out the video array. It was very easy. And here's an example of a partially closed gate. And then you can find out if there's a rock you know, or a tree or something that's getting stuck. And then you can assess uh, the issue that you need to go after and clean up the gate. Other things that you do when you're doing construction or maintenance, uh, additional work with a, a hydroelectric plant, a dam, uh, is that many times you're doing pile casings to reinforce the structure around it. In this case, and this is Henning Foster, by the way, from our consult, um, he was hired to go and to find out if there was any, if there were any deformations with the casings that they were putting in uh, for this new construction. Uh, the casings are two and a half meters, approximately uh, seven feet across, eight feet across, and they're 50 meters deep, approximately 150 meters deep. Um, of course, this water over here is a special type of water they put in when they're doing this type of construction. Uh, they call it, it can be like a slurry. It's kind of milky, uh, and it's very opaque. Uh, here's a video, of course, going into it with a sonar. In this case, it's going to be a scanning sonar. And what we're trying to accomplish with this scanning sonar is to find out if there are any deformations. Uh, a casing, by nature, it should be perfectly round, around, in this case, two and a half meters. So when you're going down the casing, down this gigantic tube that is going to lay a foundation for a bigger structure, uh, you want it to be totally round. He went to another casing to see if there was any that there were any deformations, and voila, uh, it was an oblique deformation, kind of like an oval. And with this type of sonar, a scanning sonar, um, you can basically measure what a deformation is. It should be two and a half meters. Uh, they basically found out that it was two meters on one end, and then three meters on the other end. Uh, and then they had to fix it from there. Here's an example of if the water is too murky or if you're trying to do some type of form factors and find out um, what you need to accomplish in order to have uh, to give a, a deliverable for your end user. Um, here's a case study of one of our power users uh, and consultants and trainers, Steve Van Meter. He got called to go into this dam called Peru Dam in Malaysia. And basically, they were refurbishing uh, Peru Dam, which is around uh, 59 meters, 180 feet high earth and concrete irrigation dam uh, near the border with Thailand. And the dam provides water for rice paddies farms in the central Malaysia area. And then if you view from the dam into the lake, there's a work, work platform in the middle of the lake, the reservoir, there's a work platform. And then there are boats that move the gear and people to the platform. Um, the 
you can see the discharge coming out here to basically feed water to the rice paddies. And this is when it's not being used. Uh, once on site, once the people and the equipment were there, um, you go into the flooring platform phase where you want to do your inspection. Uh, basically, you want, they wanted to inspect the penstock, the, the middle tubes of the dam. And the platform has a moon pool in the center of the deck. And then they had a little generator, a 1,000 watt generator here to feed two video arrays and do the inspection. Um, they used two types of sonars to do the, this type of inspection. They used a video array with a micron sonar, a scanning sonar, and they also used a video array with a blue view sonar, an imaging sonar. And we'll see examples of that. Uh, here's part of the operation. This is Steve Van Meter with the people who were asking for the inspection, the owners, inspectors, and all the folks. And there are different ways you can deploy a video array. In this case, of course, in the moon pool in the middle of the reservoir. But in this case, Steve decided that it would be useful to have some type of weight, down weight, for the operation. And depending on the operation, depending what type of scenario or deployment ways you can do this to do your inspection. Once again, the teledeployment system, small generator, and here's a very with a scanning sonar. 